Chapter 24 Home Come on, come on! Wilbur nearly trips over his feet, pushing at the dirt underneath him to continue running, Techno hot on his heels. Even with the rough terrain, they keep running up the hill, gasping for air and laughing in anticipation, just waiting for the sight of a house tucked away past the trees, the sight of home. It's so close, it's right there. Wilbur can practically see it. The door and the windows and the potential, right in reach, right in his palms. Home. Right there. Slowpoke! Techno calls out, taking his chance as Wilbur stumbles. He chuckles in victory, then shrieks in surprise as Will lunges forward to grab at the back of his shirt, dragging them both down to the ground. They both nearly roll down the hill. Boys! Phil yells out, his voice far, but not out of sight. From here, Wilbur can hear Skeppy talking, Bad giving a light laugh. They're so slow, he thinks. And he then yanks at Techno's hair, just to be a little shit. Ow! Ow! Techno hits him in the face, pushing him away. They both separate and land into the dirt, swinging their feet out at each other. Cheater! I'm not! Wilbur breathlessly denies, giggling as Techno whacks him in the ankle. He scoots back, then rolls onto his knees, quickly standing to his feet. I was just making it fair, he yells, and he starts to run, Techno making a failed attempt at grabbing him. Wilbur runs, continuing up the hill, following the stone path that is barely visible underneath the dirt and grass. Phil had said it was a good path once. They just need to clean it. Remake it. Because it got overgrown when Phil had left. Now it can be better. Newer. Now it's theirs. Technoblade follows after his brother, giving a groan of frustration. But still laughing. Too eager to really be upset. They're both humming with excitement. With energy. Phil couldn't slow them down even if he tried. And he did try, somewhat. Will? Phil calls again, a grin on his face, as he only hears high laughter past the trees. Techno, wait up for us! He says, but it's futile. There was no stopping them from the second they saw the stone path, knowing what it led to. Eh, let them run. Skeppy shrugs, adjusting the bag of their supplies over his shoulders. Bad holds most of the stuff, being stronger. But Skeppy still insists upon helping. Maybe it'll tire them out enough so they won't be all hyper at lunchtime. Doubt that. Phil shakes his head, lowering his attention down to Tommy being held in his arms. He's been asleep ever since last night, and his back looks miles better with the potion that Phil had grabbed. But even so... There is still that weight of worry. They've done all they could. They've cleaned off the blood and fixed up every last scratch. But until Tommy wakes up, Phil will fret over him just a bit, holding him close against his chest. The wings on his back are beautiful. They're truly dragon wings, no doubt about it. Pitch black, with shiny scales. They're tough, and new, and they're so small. Phil knows they'll grow into something magnificent. Something big and strong. And with that will come the habit of a child constantly trying to glide everywhere. That's going to be a fun few weeks. This path has seen better days. Bad voices, looking down underneath their feet, seeing the way the forest has grown over the stone hiding it underneath grass and flowers and dirt. Did you build this? He asks Phil, seeming quietly impressed. I did. Phil hums, staring down at said path, before lifting his head back up, looking ahead. 
He built this entire house with his own two hands. There's going to be an awful lot of things he'll need to fix up, after having left it behind for so long. He knows that the house is going to be dusty, overgrown, and in need of a clean. He also knows that, no matter the state of it, it's not going to deter the kids from just sprinting right on through to explore inside. Wilbur keeps sprinting up ahead, almost tripping again for what feels like the hundredth time. He smiles, pushes forward, and then stops suddenly, the momentum almost tipping him over. Techno stops with him, eyes wide, standing just beside Wilbur. They both pant with exhaustion, faces red and their hands and sleeves covered with dirt. But they wear matching expressions, matching looks of disbelief and joy. There, on the top of the hill, in the middle of tall grass and flowers, sits a small stone house. There's a chimney and a big wooden door, the porch seeming practically fallen apart, with green growth stretching across it. There's old, dusty windows offering a peek inside, vines reaching up over the old roof, seeming to try and hide it away. It's a memory of a home, a building taken over by the forest, withered away with time. It's perfect. Both Techno and Wilbur seem to move in unison, instantly running forward and forgetting that there was even a race to the top. They step through the growth, with grass tickling at their ankles, and they make a mad dash towards the front door, Wilbur grabbing at the handle first, eager and impatient. Is it locked? Techno asks, Wilbur pushing and pulling and only getting a quiet creak with each movement. Do you think Phil even has the key? He wonders, glancing back down the stone path, where the adults are still walking up at their own pace. We already have the key. Wilbur insists, slamming his shoulder into the door. The wood makes a loud groan, and he gives a wild grin. It's called breaking and entering. Techno blinks, then instantly gets on board, nudging Wilbur to the side for him to try. Wilbur steps aside over a patch of flowers, lifting his head with careful attention. Technoblade pushes at the wood, humming, and then slams into it with his shoulder, just like how Wilbur did. He seems to pack more of a punch with it, though, because the door swings open with a loud crack, and Techno screams as he falls inside. Wilbur laughs with a clap of his hands, leaning in through the doorway. He watches as Techno pushes himself up and sneezes with the dust that's flown up into the air. He turns his head behind him to look up at Will, Got it. With a roll of his eyes, Wilbur helps him up, pulling him onto his feet. Techno gives a cough, shaking his head. But he seems all right, so Wilbur moves his attention onto the interior of the house they've just entered, taking in the room around them. There's grass scattered across the floorboards, more vines climbing up the walls, and Wilbur traces across the side of it, leads his vision over to a low wooden table with carvings etched into it, a vase sitting on top. There's a plush chair beside it, a blue blanket laying over its arm, looking comfy and warm even with the dust. A fireplace rests across from the couch, up against the wall, with plants growing where the firewood should be. Wilbur moves slowly, heading towards the table with his hand stretched out, his fingers grazing over the designs. He leans closer, tries to see the picture carved in there, as Techno goes over to the couch, poking at the cushion and running his hand over the discarded blanket. This place is dirty, Techno notes, lifting his hand up and finding dust sticking to it. He walks over to Wilbur's side, taking Wilbur's hand in his and staring down at the table with him. I've slept in worse spots, Wilbur says softly, his voice quiet. 
he traces over the carvings once more, and finds it to be a depiction of clouds, swirling and interwoven into a neat design. He lifts his head, looking around at the walls, finding more carvings hidden away around the doorway, on the baseboard, and he realizes that, even with how the home looks abandoned, there's a strange amount of life still left in it. The carvings are just a part of it. There's a painting of some sort hung on the wall by the front door, the sunlight shining on it. It's a little faded, but it's colorful, bright. It reminds Wilbur of a flower field. He pulls Techno along, out of the living room, towards a hallway. The floorboards squeak with their weight, and they pass two doors. One of them is just a bathroom, but the other is a quiet old bedroom. There's more carvings on this one, and it's more complicated than just the clouds on the table. There's wings and feathers and a heart that looks awfully similar to the one around Phil's neck. Techno reaches a hand out to it, his fingertips resting against the heart, and he looks at Wilbur, the two of them seeming to agree on something. Techno opens the door, the doorknob twisting with a click. He leads Will inside, and they both stay silent, moving carefully, curiosity and anticipation hovering over them both. There's a big bed with dark green sheets placed in the corner, a nightstand beside it. Immediately, Wilbur can pick out the carvings upon it, a picture made on the bed's headboard. A bookshelf sits straight across from the bed, filled with not just books, but also tiny wooden sculptures of some sort. Beside the bookshelf, there's a desk, with papers and pencils still left on top of the table. Wilbur turns his head with a quiet breath, and he spots a wardrobe, more designs etched into the wood, a woven basket beside it. Each thing here seems to hold so much effort, like it was all made carefully, lovingly. Wilbur can't imagine how Phil ever made the choice to leave it. Techno pulls away from Wilbur to reach up towards the bookshelf, grabbing a small wooden figure on the shelf. He holds it carefully in his palm, dusting it off, and he finds it to be a sculpture of a woman with wings. She's beautiful, smiling. And Technoblade puts it back quietly, wondering. Wilbur focuses on the wooden desk. He runs his hands over the carvings. More carvings, more life. And then pulls open a drawer, finding drawings. Sketches. I didn't know Dad could draw. Wilbur whispers. Techno leans closer to see, and he stares for a moment, before lifting his eyes up to Wilbur and shrugging lightly. Wilbur closes the drawer. There's a basket put to the side in the corner, filled with metal tools, things Wilbur doesn't know how to use. There's a big chest against the wall, and when Will lifts it open with a grunt, he finds paints and bottles, pieces of cloth. He gives another look to Techno, and they both shrug this time. They look through the wardrobe that's in the other corner of the room, and they find old outfits with holes for Phil's wings in the back. They find boots and armor, a sword tucked away behind a pile of pants. Wilbur holds it by the handle, lifting it out, and Techno stares at it with wide eyes, touching his own sword on his hip, like he's comparing it, or rather, imagining himself to be having a sword just like that. This is definitely Dad's. Techno says, poking at the metal blade, Wilbur putting it down on the ground and leaving the wardrobe wide open. They continue snooping around. Techno finds a guitar underneath the bed, the strings giving an out-of-tune noise when Wilbur plucks at one of them. It's painted with soft colors, drawings that remind Wilbur of the paintings over in the living room. Will finds a knife in the nightstand drawer and stares upon realizing 
It's got a bright red jewel at the center of it. It's not quite a weapon. More just something pretty. Shiny. Techno finds a spider by the window. A spider web across the glass. And Wilbur blows at it, watching the creature skitter away. Eventually, Wilbur glances down the hall once more, and realizes they haven't even gotten to the rest of the house. A kitchen still waiting for them at the end. He calls Techno, and drags him over there by the hand, finding cabinets and high counters, a big wooden table with windows all around, letting the sun pour in. The kitchen holds just as much life as everything else does. There are still carvings and paint found in the wood. Never thought Dad would make a house with so many drawings on it. Techno says, offhandedly, walking behind the counter, reaching up at a sink with clean dishes still left inside. He grabs a cup, holds it in his hands, with the knowledge that these dishes are also theirs now. I think it fits, Wilbur responds, opening each cabinet one by one. He finds kitchenware and plates and old containers with herbs. It seems like something he would do. Painting? Techno puts the cup onto the counter. I've never even seen him carve anything before. Wilbur looks through the next cabinet, pushing at an old pot. Maybe he could cough something for us. He moves on to the next one. I'm going to ask him to cough it. Ah! Technoblade spins around with a hand on his sword, his other arm reaching out as Wilbur falls backwards with surprise, landing onto the rough floor. Something escapes from the cabinet he had just opened, and Wilbur sits up with a jolt. Catch it! He demands, before he's even recovered from his fall. Techno watches the thing run past his feet, towards the kitchen table, and he chases after it without hesitation, realizing that it's a small mouse that spooked Will. He jumps at it, slamming onto the ground with his hands just barely missing. And the mouse keeps running, Wilbur going after it, crawling underneath the wooden table to follow. The chairs screech as he pushes them to the side, his hand grabbing out and hitting the floorboards. Techno gets up, quickly helping him in the chase, crawling underneath the table as well. Get it! Get it! Over there! Ah, it's going towards you! The chairs screech again as Techno moves them out of the way, and Wilbur squeals in surprise, the mouse running over his knee. Techno? Will? Phil's voice echoes out from the front door. Phil steps inside the house slowly, looking around like he's half expecting the place to fall apart around him. His hand rests on the back of Tommy's head, fingers brushing through blonde curls. His wings shift behind him with a bit of nervous energy, and his feathers brush against the doorway for just a second. The floorboards creak underneath his feet as he turns his head, taking in his home and all the memories that are carved into the walls. He turns in place, dragging his gaze across the vines and the wear and tear that age has left behind. It's the same as he left it. Exactly the same. But he feels as if he's looking through a different perspective this time around. The place is overgrown, and practically abandoned, but it seems... bright. Better. Even with the dust. He feels a little more hopeful, this time around, looking at these walls. His attention settles onto the painting hanging on the wall to the side, and he smiles gently. He holds Tommy a little closer. Boys? Phil calls again turning his head down the hall, taking a slow step forward. He pauses at hearing Wilbur scream with joy, Techno cackling in glee. Got it! Phil blinks, staying in place. What are you two doing in the kitchen? There's the sound of chairs screeching as an answer, tiny footsteps heading his way, and Phil watches as Will and Techno run down the hall towards him to show off their victory 
a tiny mouse held tightly in Wilbur's claws. Look what we got, Dad! Wilbur beams, holding the poor thing up higher, right in Phil's face. Techno grins wide, reaching a hand out towards the mouse, tapping it on top of its head. It squeaks with terror. Is... is that a mouse? Phil asks. Techno, nodding furiously. We caught it! We found it in the kitchen! Look! Wilbur lifts the animal up higher, and Phil leans away, holding Tommy close in his arms. Okay. Phil laughs a little, their excitement rubbing off on him. A small, mischievous smile creeps across his face. He leans in towards them both, speaking quietly. Go show Skeppy, yeah? He nods towards the front door, where Skeppy had just walked in. He screams bloody murder upon having Wilbur run at him with a tiny mouse in hand. They end up putting their stuff down and make a start on cleaning the inside. The windows are opened, dust is swept off the counters, and roots are torn out from the floorboards, being put outside instead where they belong. Skeppy finds a broom and puts it to good use in the kitchen, while Bad takes a basket and rounds up whatever piece of fabric that can be cleaned, aiming to take it to the river Phil had said was nearby. It's the path to the left of the house, mate, Phil says, leaning out the front doorway, Bad heading off to go see the stream. That one, past there. He points a finger up, one arm still holding a sleeping Tommy to his chest. Got it, got it. Bad nods, looking around at the forest, finding a few more paths leading off towards the trees. Where did the other paths go? He asks, raising his eyebrows. Phil shrugs, with a grin. I'll show you around later. I know I've got a garden far off somewhere. He hums, wondering just how overgrown that area has gotten. He's going to need to put a lot of work into these weeks. Wilbur and Techno chase around their mouse in the hall, Skeppy screaming once or twice when he finds the critter running past his feet, with Techno and Wilbur lunging after it not a second after. The poor thing is going to flop over and perish from stress at any point now. Phil heads into his old room, stripping the covers off the bed and placing them to the side, making a note to take them down to the river later. He sets Tommy down, gently, so the boy has somewhere soft to rest, and so his arms can have a bit of a break. This is your room, right? Will asks from the doorway, Phil glancing behind him as he stands up straight, sitting beside Tommy's sleeping figure. You never mentioned you could draw. Where'd you get that sword? Techno asks, their mouse in his hand his eyes pointed at the weapon that's sitting on the floor, left in front of the wardrobe that is just wide open. You two already looked through my things that quickly? Phil asks, a bit of a teasing note in his voice. Both his boys turn their heads to the ground. Come here. Wilbur goes first, practically crashing into Phil's arms, climbing up on the bed to sit beside him. Techno leans into the bed, the mouse held within his palms as he looks towards Tommy, listening to his tiny snores. You have a guitar and a knife and a bunch of tools, Wilbur says, like Phil doesn't know it already, since it is his room. You have a lot of jars in the kitchen, Phil snorts, brushing Wilbur's hair back out of his face. And they're all a mess. Not really, Techno hums. It's just dirty, dusty. He brushes off dirt from the little mouse's head, smiling. Did you used to paint as a hobby? I did. Phil nods, Wilbur tugging at his sleeve. And you know how to carve stuff? He asks. How did you do that? He points towards the doorway, the designs etched in. Phil smiles. I'll tell you both all about it after we've cleaned up a bit, okay? 
This house is practically falling apart. I'm pretty sure the kitchen has got a whole ecosystem in the cabinets. We can watch Tommy for you. Techno suggests, climbing onto the bed. So you can go help Skeppy? He says, pretending like this is definitely not just an excuse to get out of helping with chores. Phil knows what he's doing. You sure? Don't want to come wash dishes with me? Wilbur frowns a bit, scrunching his nose. Nah. All right, then. Phil laughs, getting up from the bed. You both keep an eye on Tommy. Come for me if he wakes up, okay? They both nod, scooting closer to the baby, Wilbur staring at him intensely, like Tommy's going to burst into flames at any second. Phil nods, stepping towards the door before pausing. And Techno? Techno raises his head. Go put that poor mouse outside, mate. Techno huffs. The day passes quickly with all the work in their hands. Phil cleans the kitchen, helps with Skeppy to reorganize the jars and dishes after scrubbing them down, cleaning out the cabinets and chasing out any lasting mice. Bad makes a few more trips over to the river, both to wash items and to bring water back for cleaning. Techno and Wilbur don't do much in terms of cleaning, but they do tidy up Phil's room a little, keeping a diligent eye on Tommy the entire time, taking their job as older brothers very, very seriously. You can't blame them for being a little protective, with the night beforehand. The sun quietly begins to set, red-orange just barely starting to creep its way across the horizon. And when Phil goes to check on his boys, he finds them all sleeping on his bed, Techno and Wilbur curled up around Tommy. The excitement of the day seems to have caught up quick, and they crashed hard by the looks of it. Phil lets them sleep. He heads out of the house, asking Bad and Skeppy to watch their volume, and to watch the kids as he goes out into the forest to check on something more past one of his stone paths. Going to see how bad your gardens have gotten after all this time? Skeppy asks, waving Phil off as he goes towards a path by the back of the house. Phil laughs. Yup. Gotta see how many weeds I'm going to be pulling out for the next few days. Skeppy shrugs, and he heads back into the house quietly, leaving Phil to travel on towards the trees. He heads down an overgrown stone path, one that he's walked over hundreds of times. It's still familiar, after all these years. He swears he still walks this path even in his dreams. The tiny clearing up ahead isn't far. Rather, it's kinda near the house. By design. Phil reaches the end of the path with the sunset washing over him, the forest being quiet, peaceful. It's a mess of flowers here, a mess of grass and roots and leaves scattered around. The sun shines on through the tree branches, little bits of light through the shade. And at the center of it all, there is a piece of stone just waiting. A grave, with wings carved into the rock, a design meticulously made with care. Phil smiles at it, but it doesn't quite reach his eyes. His wings shift from behind him, almost wrapping around him. Hello, love. He greets, lowering his head upon Kristen's resting spot. Sorry that I've been away. He makes his way through the growth, stepping slowly, taking his spot beside the gravestone sitting in the flowers and the grass. I've been busy, Phil hums. Went traveling, like I said I would. I found something. The carving in the rock has worn down a bit with time, and he traces his fingers across it, making a note to polish it up as soon as he can. Found someone, more like. Multiple someones. 
there was... He pauses, clears his throat. There was another prophecy, apparently. The end of the world kind, you know. Three monsters fated to kill life as we know it, or something like that. I went after them. I couldn't just let them die because they would be killed on their own. I know it. People got afraid, so I had to go find them. I took them in. I've got three sons now. You would love them, I promise. Techno is a little shy sometimes, but he's smart. Quick with a sword, too. He might even end up beating me in a fight one day when he's older. Won't that be something? Wilbur's a bit skittish, but he's sharp, thoughtful. I'm sorry to admit I got him late, but he's safe now. He's all right now. I'm going to... I'll keep him safe. He'll never have to live like how he did ever again. And Tommy, he's... Phil stops, blinking slowly, watching the world blur in his vision. Kristen, he's got wings. They're so small and perfect. And I know they're not like ours, not, not with feathers or anything, but I can't help but... He leans his head against the stone, smiling, even with the tears down his face. It's been a while since I've had anyone like me. You think you'll be able to fly with me one day? A breeze flows through the forest with a gentle whistle. Phil hums, his wings curling around himself. I hope so. It'll be good. This will be good. I'm going to raise them here, by the mountain. I'll protect them here, hide them away. They won't ever have to even think about the prophecy. I'll... I'll let them just forget about it. Let them live happily. Phil sighs, content. I can't wait. He sits there for a while more, talking quietly, letting the forest listen. The sun sets, bit by bit, and as the sky starts to dim, that's when he deems it time to head back home, to his family waiting. He gives a goodbye, just a temporary one, and promises to be back soon, to clean up the flowers and to recarve the stone wings. He leaves, with his necklace glowing red around his neck, always healing, always bright, always full of life. Chapter 25 Rainy Mornings When Phil wakes up, it's to the smell of rain and the weight of children resting on his limbs. The morning is quiet and wet. The clouds outside aren't a raging storm, but it is rain, nevertheless. A simple spring shower. The water pours down from the sky and falls upon their old little house, where the family inside stays nice and dry. There is the sound of raindrops reaching Phil's ears. Not just from outside the window, but from inside the room as well. As it turns out, with all the years that Phil has been away, the roof has seemed to develop a few leaks here and there. They'd only found that out last night when the rain had begun to fall, and with it, puddles forming inside the hallway. Bad had frantically gone to help Phil put jars out to collect the rain, so as to preserve the creaky floorboards from getting any worse. Techno and Wilbur hadn't been as bothered by the leaks as the adults were, though. They made a game of it. The game being getting Tommy to hold his hand out over a jar and watch as a raindrop landed onto the back of his hand. Apparently, water splashing onto his scales was just the damn funniest thing in the world to Tommy. He would pull his hand back in surprise, then burst into uncontrollable giggles. He'd scream and wag his tail and smile wide. 
and after Will and Techno were done laughing with him, they would adjust his hand out over the jar once more, and wait with anticipation for the leaky roof to offer up another drop of rain. After a moment, the roof would never disappoint, and down again another raindrop, landing onto Tommy's hand, sending him into yet another giggle fit. That was the game. Just the three of them playing with the rain, sitting in the middle of the dimly lit hall. They repeated it over and over, until Phil had to drag them off to bed, the night growing late. Now, the kids lay sleeping against Phil's side. Wilbur rests curled up against the left of his waist, held underneath one of Phil's arms. Techno sleeps on his right, his head more tucked onto Phil's shoulder, his feet pressed against his side. Tommy sleeps squarely on top of his chest, sprawled out on his stomach with his tiny hands gripping onto Phil's shirt. Phil loves them so much, but his wings are being absolutely crushed from underneath him. It's not a comfortable position, and he can tell he's going to be sore once he stands up. But he can't bring himself to move. Tommy just looks so peaceful where he is, and Wilbur's snoring so very softly, and Techno's cheek is pressed right up to Phil's collarbone, and Phil gives a gentle, happy sigh. All's right with the world. The morning has already approached by now, judging by the dim light coming from the window. Phil can't quite tell how far into the morning it is, since the clouds have blocked out so much of the sun, but he reckons it's early enough to spare a few extra minutes. He stares up at the ceiling with a hum in the back of his throat, the noise dragging on until it grows into a light chirp. Phil glances down at Tommy almost expecting an instant reaction. But Tommy sleeps on. Phil smiles anyhow. A noise of raindrops continues on in his ears, as he slowly, fully wakes up for the day, and he turns his head to the side to look at the jars scattered across his room. Three jars, placed across the floor, all to catch the rain water leaking from above. One just in front of his door, one at the foot of the bed, and one right in the center of the room. Plink. The raindrops go. As they land into the container, over and over until it collects into something more. Plink. 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 The jars are less full than how they were when Phil fell asleep. He assumes Bad came to switch them out while they were asleep. Both him and Skeppy have been keeping busy these past few nights, trying to get the house into something a little less dusty and worn down. Bat seems to enjoy the work. He's been mopping the kitchen and wiping down the halls with a happy tune in his throat. His words being, I want to see what it's like when it's not all, well... He shrugged, giving Phil a sheepish look. Dirty. Phil had only laughed with that, admiring the way the hall looked a little brighter now that all the dirt had been firmly scrubbed away. It's long due for clean and repair, to be honest. Skeppy isn't so keen on the cleaning, but he does seem determined on fixing the floorboards up, after having tripped on a few dips more than once. The roots from before had left their mark, and their curse, seeing as Skeppy had been the only one to be falling over from uneven flooring. Techno and Wilbur had found it funny, at least. And what they laughed at, Tommy laughed at. So all the children were thoroughly amused, with Skeppy slamming into the ground after having misstepped. Phil listens close for the noise of any voices talking nearby. Faintly, he can make out Bad's words somewhere in the kitchen. But that's all. Just a muffled half of a conversation. He listens to the rain instead the pattering against the window being much louder than any hushed sentences down the hall. He listens to the soft breathing and snoring around him, and listens to his own quiet wheeze as he lets out a long breath. The morning is nice. 
It's filled with rain and a safe home, and all of Phil's kids being held in his arms. It's good. But he can't manage to sit still for much more than ten minutes, before needing to move and free his wings from the discomfort of being crumpled underneath his back. Needless to say, the children are grumpy about being woken up. Phil winces, as Techno yanks at his hair for a moment, making a grumbled-out noise as Wilbur tries to dig himself into Phil's hip. Mate, Phil whispers. Technoblade giving his best attempt at hiding away into Phil's neck. Techno, ow, ow. Again with the hair. Phil had really hoped he left that habit as a toddler. But ever since they've gotten to their home, Technoblade's only gotten clingier. He's not sure what to think of it, honestly. It's a bit endearing, to be fair. But then again, Phil thinks anything they do is endearing even when Tommy tries to eat the frogs outside. Said baby makes an unhappy sigh from where he rests on Phil's chest, turning his head to the other side and trying to be more comfortable. Phil goes absolutely still for a second, and it all returns to peace. Tommy settles back into sleep. Techno loosens his grasp, and Wilbur is blissfully silent. He tries to move again. Oh. Wilbur whines, feeling Phil nudge him away from his spot. He squeezes his eyes shut and tries to pull at Phil's shirt to convince him to keep still. It's not morning. Phil holds back a snort. It actually is, Will. It's just rainy. Snort? Will responds, hands held on tight to Phil's sleeve as he slowly sits up. A miserable noise comes from his throat. As Phil slowly sits up from bed, his wings trying their best to stretch out into the pillows. Take your brother, Techno. Phil says, carefully moving Tommy off his chest and onto the bed to replace where he had been sleeping. Hopefully, his efforts will distract the two of them to let him escape for just a second. Techno, thankfully, relents and lets go of Phil's hair, curling up around Tommy nearly right away. He rests a hand over blonde curls, giving a small huff, before cracking his eyes open to stare at Will for a moment, who is not nearly as easily swayed by Tommy as he is. Will, my shirt. Phil sits hunched to the side, courtesy of Wilbur yanking at him whilst half asleep. Phil swears these children get a death grip whenever they're woken up in the morning, honestly. My shirt. Wilbur repeats, still not letting go of Phil's sleeve. He kicks his legs up to hit at Phil's waist, and Phil scoffs fondly. Wilbur. Phil shakes his arm, trying to get his son to let go. Go back to bed, mate. I'm gonna go make some food. I don't want food. Wilbur frowns, desperately trying to tug Phil closer so he can wrap his arms around his hand and keep him from escaping. I want you to not leave. I want to go back to sleep. Techno mumbles, closing his eyes as Wilbur's nose scrunches up with another whine. I'll be right back, Will. Phil leans forward, pressing a kiss onto Will's forehead. Wilbur takes the opportunity to try and get a good grip on Phil's arm. But Phil's had this experience more than once. Slowly, one by one, he pries off Wilbur's fingers from his wrist, and all the while, Wilbur makes a noise of dramatic suffering. Techno huffs again, in annoyance. Go back to bed. Sleep with your brothers. Phil suggests, his arm finally free, and Wilbur face plants into the covers, out of despair. Phil pats comfortingly at his back, Will turning his head to give a furiously grumpy glare. Fine, he says, and Phil is just glad he wasn't tempted to go charming Phil into staying with them. But only because I get to hug Tommy. I'm hugging Tommy, Techno protests. Phil 
tickles lightly at Techno's foot, getting a weak kick in response. You can both share. Careful with his wings, okay? Okay. Techno answers, just as Wilbur shoves at him and whispers, Move. Phil stands up from the bed, hearing quiet bickering behind his back as he stretches his wings out. They ache a bit as they're held out into the air, but it settles and leaves soon enough, and Phil sighs, making his way across the room. The argument behind him ends just as quickly as it started, and as he gives one more glance behind him, he finds the three of his kids having gone back to sleep. What menaces. Phil smiles and heads out into the hall to see about breakfast being made. Being met with the surprising sight of the floorboards being suddenly repaired. Not just that, but cleaned as well. Thoroughly. It looks nothing like how it did last night. He wouldn't say he's incredibly shocked by it, but he's caught off guard. Just a day before, there were more than a few spots where Phil needed to step over a tiny gap, or a little rise in the ground. Now, it all sits flat, smoothed out, polished. There's a few cups and jars scattered all around, placed perfectly to capture the rainwater falling from the roof above. None of them have overfilled, and there are no puddles to be seen. No roots, no cracks, no places to trip and fall. Phil remembers, again, that Skeppy and Bad don't sleep during the night. They have to use their free time somehow. He hadn't expected them to use it just to fix up the house, but he appreciates the help either way. He walks to the kitchen with soft steps, moving around the containers placed on the floor, hearing a conversation grow closer as he heads down the hall. He finds Skeppy sitting at the kitchen table, a teacup, of which Phil doesn't even remember he owned, held carefully in his palms. Bad stands at the counter, seeming to be cleaning off a pile of pots and pans in front of him. A few of the pots are being used to catch rainwater, placed all around the kitchen. When this rain lets up, they really have to go repair the roof. Technically, it depends on people's currency numbers, because think about it. I could be worth plenty in one land, but worth like nothing in another. Skeppy is saying, tapping a finger against the diamond skin scattered across his face. It clinks against his fingertips, which also is made of diamond as well. Well, you're worth hundreds to me. Bad smiles warmly, looking up from where he's using a towel to wipe at a pan. Skeppy clicks his tongue in disappointment. Wow, not even thousands? That cheap? Bad's smile falls into a narrowed look. He scrubs a bit harder as Skeppy snickers. Phil scoffs lightly, their heads suddenly turning to him. Morning, he says, and they both echo back greetings to him, Skeppy pulling a chair out for Phil to sit in beside him. Phil yawns as he sits down, slumping forward in his chair and resting his head onto the table with a sigh. Rough night? Skeppy asks, raising his eyebrows and taking a sip from his cup. Phil gives a tired smile his way. Being used as a pillow for three kids isn't the best sleeping conditions, I'll admit. Sounds terrible. Skeppy hums. Good thing I don't have to deal with that. Phil snorts. You could take my spot if you want. Nope. Thankfully, I'm childproof. He taps at the shiny rock on his skin once more. I doubt any of those kids would want me as a pillow. Too uncomfy, I've been told. I don't think Techno would care. He'll sleep anywhere as long as it's a vaguely horizontal surface. Phil points out, making a flat hand gesture, as if tracing out the shape. We've got to get them their own beds, Bad suggests, placing a pot down into a specific pile. Or their own rooms. Their own space, honestly. You're all adorable and resting together, but I think they're going to suffocate you one of these days. They've got tiny little death grips whenever I wake up. Phil breathes out, trying to sound annoyed, 
but he just sounds unbearably fond. And the house is small. I've just got the one room. Then we'll add a few more once the rain's passed. Skeppy shrugs a shoulder, and Bad walks up behind Phil to place an empty teacup down in front of him. Tea? He asks, and Phil sits up, going to nod, before then pausing. He blinks in slight confusion, staring at the cup. You guys made tea? He asks, looking up at Bad to find a small kettle held in his hands. Bad beams with something like pride. Just from a few plants outside? I recognized some of them, so... Bad smiles. I found a kettle in your cabinet, and I got your little stove to work, so I thought I'd make something for me and Skeppy. Phil looks at the stove in question, which seems better off than it did when they first got here. There's no more dust on it, so that's nice. Yeah, I need to go through that sometime. Phil mutters, eyeing the pile of pots and pans laid out on the counter. He can't, for the life of him, remember exactly what he has in the house. He knows he spent a rather long amount of time gathering items to live comfortably, but that was so, so long ago. And it's not like he's ever kept number of how many pots he owns. And I'll have tea, mate. Thanks. Bad pours him a cup. Skeppy leans back in his seat while slurping at his drink, and he stares out the kitchen window, watching the rain pour down. The noise of raindrops surrounds the three of them, the pots and cups placed around the kitchen preventing any water from soaking into the ground. I saw you guys redid the floors. Phil notes, glancing down at the floor. Skeppy looks down with him, looking a little bitter. I got tired of tripping on my face. Skeppy huffs. Bad, poorly hiding a laugh. Phil only smiles, something like anticipation swelling up in his chest. He leans back in his seat, his wings shifting underneath the weight of his back. About adding more rooms. Skeppy lifts his head in interest. You think you could help add a second floor onto what we've got so far? Phil asks. I know I've got better tools somewhere. In a chest, probably. A second floor would be nice. Phil will admit they need more rooms for the kids. For him. And for Bad and Skeppy. So far, they've been fine, considering how content Will and Techno are to share a bed with him. But that's not to say it'll be like that forever. They need their own proper rooms, their own place to have their own things. This is a home, but it can be a lot more. It just needs some work, especially with the leaks in the roof. We could make good progress over the summer, Skeppy nods. Should have it done by fall or sooner. Hopefully sooner. It'd be no good to have the place half done and cold, Bad says. Phil swallows back a burst of uncontrollable joy, of even having this well into the summer, spring, the rest of the year, the rest of his life. This is his life now. They've made it. They've gotten home. And now his only worries are to take care of it and keep it. It's too sweet a thought. And he closes his eyes with a content sigh. He opens them right back up, at the noise of a door being opened down the hall. Dad? Wilbur calls, his voice dragging out, sounding a little hoarse. Tommy's crying. Phil puts his cup down, and gets up out of his seat to answer to his children. <laughs>